Number 14. On the basis of dipole moments and or hydrogen bonding, explain in a qualitative way the differences in the boiling points of acetone, which has a boiling point of 56.2 degrees Celsius, and one propanol, which is 97.4 degrees Celsius as the boiling point, which have similar molar masses. Okay, so let's just write it out here. We have acetone. And we have one propanol. One prop. Oh boy. Prop. Uh, no. Beautiful. Now, they did tell us that the boiling point for acetone was 56.2 degrees Celsius, and the other one was way higher 97.4 degrees Celsius. And we basically have to explain in a qualitative way. Qualitative just means, uh, you know, via words, by, you know, by wording. No math here. So we're just talking about it by wording qualitatively, discussion, about why the boiling points are so different when they both have very, very similar molar masses. Now, the easiest way to go about this question is to actually look at what acetone and 1-propanol look like. So what I will do is I will supply the chemical formula for acetone and propanol, and then we can draw a Lewis structure and see what's actually going on. So acetone is CH2O versus propanol, which if I can just write this out, maybe I'll just write it out this way. It's going to be uh, C3H, what is that, H8. So H7OH. Now, propanol can be, uh, you know, given a molecular formula of uh, different ways. But I'll just pick C3H7OH. So now from here, what you can do is you could pause the video and see if you can draw the Lewis structures between acetone and propanol. Now, the reason why we are drawing the Lewis structure is because we need to determine what's going on with their boiling points. And boiling points, which one is higher in boiling point, which one is lower in boiling point, this all comes from intermolecular forces. And it's kind of like a, uh, a domino effect, is if we are discussing intermolecular forces, what we're really trying to see is we're trying to just focus on what these structures look like. It would be way easier to just see what acetone looks like, see what 1-propanol looks like, and from there, find out what intermolecular forces they have. So, let's see. Now, we have tons of videos on our channel just trying to learn um, how to draw Lewis structures. So, if you do need more guidance, you can always go back to that. But just, you know, pause the video, see if you could figure these out, and see if your uh, answer matches mine. So, acetone... You have a carbon in the middle, surrounded by one bond to hydrogen, one bond to the other hydrogen, and a double bond to oxygen. And that oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons. All right. Propanol, or one propanol, would have three carbons strung together with the hydrogens. But just know that if it's 1-propanol, the 1 is talking about what carbon number the OH has to be on. And if I do number this as carbon 1, 2, and 3, the OH should be on the first carbon. But you can always number it as 1, 2, and 3 and put the OH on the back one. It does not matter. So I'm going to put the OH here. And that's a single bond, oxygen. And now I just need to fill in the seven other hydrogens. So let's uh, see. I have two on this side to make that carbon happy. Two on this side to make this carbon happy. So that's four, five, six, seven. And now everything is good. All right. So here they are. Now since I'm looking at acetone, I said, wait a minute. CH2O, that was my mistake. Acetone is not just one carbon and two hydrogens and an oxygen. It does have this general structure, 
but I'm just going to change it up a little bit because what we drew was formaldehyde or what I drew was formaldehyde. My mistake on that. Let's just um, change it up a little bit. Now, instead of the two hydrogens, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this out and I'm just going to say that instead you have two CH3 groups. So once again, you can write out acetone in a lot of different ways, but just know that instead of these two hydrogens, you have two carbons that have now three hydrogens attached to them. So one, two, three, and then we'll do one, two, three. Did anybody catch that? But we caught it, and that's the only thing that matters. All right, so now we have acetone and propanol. Now let's see, what types of intermolecular forces do these have? Well, dispersion forces are the, the most uh, common, and that's because all compounds and all molecules, no matter what they are, they all will have dispersion forces. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say that both acetone and one propanol have dispersion forces. So dispersion and dispersion. So that makes them no difference. Now let's go on to dipole-dipole attractions. Dipole-dipole attractions only come about by polar covalent molecules. So now we're getting a little bit more specific. Now I have to find out, is this a polar molecule? Is this a polar molecule? Let's see. Now we can always think of uh, polar versus nonpolar by the acronym SNAP, S-N-A-P. Now the N and the P are the nonpolar, so that's the classifying of one of them, and the polar for the other one. Just know that the S and the N go together, and the A and the P go together. If you are a nonpolar molecule, the whole molecule has to be symmetrical, or it just has to have symmetry. So if your molecule is perfectly symmetrical, it is nonpolar. On the flip side, if your molecule is asymmetrical, or let's just say asymmetry here, your molecule will be classified as polar. So in this case, since we are looking for polar molecules for dipole-dipole attractions, we're looking for a symmetrical molecules. So now let's just dive in. Let's see what's going on here. So I look at acetone and I see that if I do cut it this way, it looks pretty symmetrical. I have the same thing on this side and on this side. But the idea is that if you cut it one way in which you can see something that's asymmetrical, it's automatically not symmetrical, which would be cutting it this way. If I cut it horizontally, I have the oxygen on the top, but I don't have any oxygens on the bottom. And this would make it a polar molecule. And since it's a polar molecule, acetone has dipole-dipole di forces. Same idea here. If I try to cut this down the middle, I guess the middle would be over here, I have an OH on the left, but I have no OHs on the right. And right off the bat for there, this definitely is polar, so which means that this definitely has dipole-dipole force. And I'll put it down here. The last intermolecular force is the most specific, which is the actual hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonding is when you have a hydrogen that is bound to one of the most electronegative elements on the periodic table. So it's an HN bond, an HO bond, or an HF. Now just know that it could be an NH, they could swap, it could be an OH, or it can be an FH. But I'm looking over here, and all these hydrogens are bound to carbons, so that doesn't check out, and this oxygen doesn't have a hydrogen. But if I go over to C3H7OH, I do have a hydrogen that is bound with the oxygen and there can exhibit hydrogen bonding. So it has the one extra 
uh, intermolecular force. There is no hydrogen bonding for acetone because that oxygen does not have a OH, which means that it can't hydrogen bond with molecules of itself. So now it says, on the basis of dipole moments and or hydrogen bonding, explain the differences in boiling uh, points. So now that it makes sense that since this one has three IMFs, three intermolecular forces, dispersion, dipole, and hydrogen bond, and this one only has two intermolecular forces, the more you collect, the higher the boiling point. So we could say since one propanol, pro, propanol has hydrogen bonding, it has a higher boiling point. And that's basically it. Uh, acetone does not have hydrogen bonding, so therefore the boiling point would drop. And there you go. What'd you think? I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. Thank you for viewing the video. And I'll talk to you soon. All right? Take care. Bye-bye.